In today's episode of Psych Cinema, I'm going to be exploring the psychological themes found in Ari Aster's summer horror film, Midsommar. I'm going to specifically look at attachment styles and how that impacts the relationship between Danny and Christian. I'm going to profile Christian and really ask the question, is he guilty of gaslighting? And then finally, I'm going to talk about empathy and how Danny is really looking for someone to really connect and feel the pain and loss that she's going through. I'm Jonathan Hederly, a licensed professional counselor, and this is Psych Cinema. Psych Cinema is Shrink Tank's video series where I explore the psychology found in the films that I watch and love. Now before I get started, do me a favor, subscribe to our channel, click on the notification bell, you'll never miss out on our content. I also want to give spoiler warnings. This Psych Cinema is going to be heavily spoiling the film Midsommar. So if you haven't seen it yet, pause this video, save it for later, go out and see it, come back, tell me your thoughts. Now I already did a brief review that we're going to uh, link in this video, but I really want to talk about the relationship between Danny and Christian, which is at the heart of Midsommar. And in some ways, this whole film is really a, a meditation on a relationship that is deteriorating for a lot of external reasons and a lot of decisions and choices that Danny and Christian make. In a lot of ways, this film really contrasts this idea of um, this, this film taking place entirely in the daylight. So everything is visible and seen, and yet the relationship and communication between Danny and Christian is all about what is not being said. They are really poor at communicating. The first thing we learn about Danny is that she has a mentally ill sister and we learn the first thing about Christian is that he's looking to get out of this relationship. And then tragedy strikes when Danny's sister uh, commits a murder-suicide with her parents. And so right from the get-go we see that this relationship which is really heading towards a breakup, Christian no longer feels capable of abandoning her and he tries to do a noble thing even though it's clear that the relationship is no longer satisfying maybe in a, in a lot of ways on both sides and that's really the setup for Midsommar a relationship where the guy is checked out and the, the girl is in the throes of tremendous loss and grief and trauma and she's really internalized it in a lot of ways I'm not going to go heavily into this, but I do want to remark that this film does a great job of highlighting the challenges of relationships where there's either family dysfunction or mental illness. It doesn't make people necessarily good or bad, but it's an extra element that really informs a relationship and the effort that people need to provide in the relationship and sometimes the needs that people have. And we see that with Danny and Christian. She finds herself constantly asking Christian, am I needy? Am I asking too much? And I think that really speaks to her attachment style. So there are four types of attachment styles. There's a secure attachment, there's an insecure or preoccupied attachment, there's a dismissive attachment, and then there's an avoidant attachment. And when we look at Danny, when we what we learn about her family, her mentally ill sister, her parents, and her worries for her sister, that we can maybe make the assumption that she has a very preoccupied insecure or anxious attachment. She's constantly worried about others. She's constantly needing reassurance from others. And in some ways we're seeing that kind of is exhausted Christian. We learn later on in the film that they've been together for four years. And it's only at this three year mark that Christian starts to talk about getting out of the relationship. And so we're kind of left to wonder, you know, was there more that Danny was able to put into the relationship? And was there a time when when Christian was more invested in the relationship. We can make assumptions, but ultimately we don't know. We just start to see the tail end when both are really kind of emotionally numb to the needs and wants of each other. And yet Danny consistently is showing uh, insecurity. Uh, it, some people might accuse her of being smothering and needy to the point where the whole uh, trip to the, the festival in Sweden is really from Christian and his, his three friends. And somehow Danny finds her way of joining them. You know, again, this needing this constant reassurance or company or leaning on Christian to provide companionship and care, even though he's not really doing a very good job of that. And so I've read actually a lot of think pieces about accusing Christian of being a gaslighter. And I really want to tackle that and, and say, is he really guilty of gaslighting Danny? So we're hearing a lot in our culture about gaslighting, but what does it exactly mean? Well, first, let's find out where the origins of the term came from. And it comes from a 1938 stage play called Gaslight. 
and later it was made into a 1940 movie, and there have been later remakes, in which a husband tried to drive his wife crazy by dimming the gas-powered lights in their home. And when the wife points this out, he denies that the light has changed at all. So gaslighting really is making a victim question their own feelings, instinct, and sanity. Yes, sanity. It makes people think they're crazy. And because of this, it is a form of abuse. And it is heavily favored by narcissists, sociopaths, and psychopaths. So here's the question. Is Christian guilty of gaslighting? I come on the opinion of not really. There is an element of maybe manipulation, but if anything, he's trying to get out of the relationship. He's, he's not trying to control Danny. What we really have here is two people that are not designed to be together in a relationship. Why? Because they are both passive and passive aggressive. So at the beginning when uh, Christian just sort of dumps on Danny that, yeah, there's this uh, month long festival in Europe that he plans to go with and she accuses him of not bringing it up and it starts to get a little heated, he kind of is avoidant. He doesn't want to talk about it. And what she does is because of her insecure and preoccupied attachment, she starts to be overly accommodating. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't want to fight, don't leave. But in some ways, it's not because he is challenging her perception, he's just as avoidant, he is conflict avoidant. And we know that because guess what? He goes and tells his friends, oh, by the way, I invited Danny to go on our trip and you guys all agreed to do that. So that's the narrative. If anything, Christian is not a gaslighter, he's actually more of a wimp. He doesn't know how to assert himself and stand up for what he thinks or feels. And that's why he's in a relationship four years in, for the last year or so, he's wanted to be out. That's how his girlfriend hijacks their summer month long trip to go to um, this festival is that you have two passive people that are not communicating their true feelings. Now in Danny's case, it's because she's going through tremendous loss and grief, but we suspect she was already kind of needy and insecure and smothering beforehand. For Christian, it's because he was really out of the relationship, but he's gonna feel like a complete douchebag if he breaks up with a girlfriend shortly after his sister murders their parents and then she um, dies by suicide as well. Like, what kind of guy would that ever be? So if anything, they're both trapped. He's trapped in a relationship where if he breaks off, he's a bad guy. She's trapped in her own grief and she doesn't know what she wants. And in a lot of ways she can't have anything because she's so emotionally devastated. And that's what brings us to this point of empathy. That is ultimately what Danny wants. She wants that from Christian even though she's not getting it. She wants him to understand and feel the tremendous loss and emptiness that she's going through. She wants him to understand why it's so hard, even a year later, to get out of bed. But Christian had already been checked out and tuned out and he's really a shell of himself just doing the bare minimum. Uh, he's a perfunctory boyfriend in a lot of ways. And what happens later in the film is though he's heavily drugged, he, um, he betrays uh, Danny and he has sex with another person and she witnesses this and when she does, she has a complete meltdown. She breaks down, she is inconsolable, she is wailing, she is crying. All of that grief and loss and numbness that, is, that has been for the two, first two hours of the film, she lets out. And an interesting thing happens is that a lot of the women in the community surround her and they start to mimic her emotional expression. They start wailing, they fall on their hands and knees, they start to cry. And again, in a lot of ways, in a very visual way, they are empathizing with her. They are putting themselves in her shoes and experiencing or expressing what she is experiencing and expressing. And that's what Danny has not been getting from Christian. And that's what she needs from Christian because she might otherwise find that, that empathy and understanding in her family. That's what she's grieving. That's what she's lost. All she has is Christian and he has been a very unavailable and emotionally unavailable partner. And so, again, this movie is very devastating in the sense that it is a very long and protracted deterioration of a relationship that right from the beginning we know that it's not going to work and we know these two people are not right for each other. Again, I don't think Christian is a gaslighter. He may be a bad boyfriend. He may just not be the right person to be able to give to a partner that has tremendous needs given her family situation and the loss. But if anything, he's not trying to control her, he's trying to get out. But you have, again, you have two really passive, indecisive people that are passive aggressive in their communication. 
and they don't see a way to get out of the relationship because in some ways breaking off from one another is not going to make them any more happier or satisfied in life. But I'm curious to get your guys' take on Danny and Christian in Midsommar. What did you think of their relationship? I'm putting myself out there in the sense of I don't think Christian is a gaslighter. I don't think he's a great boyfriend, but I don't think he's controlling or manipulating or victimizing Danny. If anything, Danny is really trying to find someone actually to carry her, and Christian is just not up to the task. But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Be sure to leave a comment below, or you can leave a recommendation of a film you'd like for me to tackle here on Psych Cinema. Be sure to check out ShrinkTank.com, our website, where you're going to find articles, other videos, podcasts, quizzes, and more that's going to explore the rich intersection of psychology and pop culture. Well, that's going to do it for today. I'm Jonathan Hederly. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the movies.